Hi everyone, welcome to my video. Uh, please hit the like button below, I'd appreciate that immensely. Um, uh, today I want to talk a little bit about 35mm film cameras um, and my five recommendations on film cameras for those just breaking into film photography. I want to state that I go onto YouTube quite a bit and I use the search bar and I'll type in film photography just to see what is going on these days, who's shooting film, their approach to it, what cameras they like and whatnot. And recently I, I have found a slew of videos of 35 millimeter camera recommendations for those breaking into film photography. Great, right? It, it is. That's nice. Very nice. Uh, a lot of the cameras they mention, I agree wholeheartedly, they are great cameras. The only problem is a lot of these cameras are just pricey and collectibles. I have seen people mention the Nikon F1. As you can see, without a lens, $300. Then there's the Nikon F2, very similar. Without a lens, you know, you're up there at $300 range. I even seen somebody go as far as to mention the Pentax 67 medium format camera right there. Yeah, that's over a thousand dollars without a lens. You're looking at fifteen to eighteen hundred dollars with the lens for that camera. And I've also seen the Pentax K1000 mentioned. Now it's a little more reasonable with a lens. You can probably land the camera in the two fifty range. I would maybe three hundred, depending on how nice the camera is. But I would say two fifty is a is a general a, a good assumption on, on on the camera in general. Uh, so what I wanted to state was that's all fine. Those are great cameras or they're, they're a bit pricey. I would not recommend those to somebody just breaking into film. Now, if you're just breaking into film, you don't even know if you want to stick with film. You may just want to shoot two or three rolls, see if you like it. Do you want to spend $300? To me, that just seems unreasonable. I, I, I wouldn't do that. If, if it were me, I wouldn't do that. Now, like I said, I started out way back in the day. So I love film. I'll, I'll never let film go. I have a whole collection of film. I have Nikons up there. I have, I have a total of 16 different Nikons. Um, another slew of uh, Fujika, uh, Minolta, Mamiya. I, I have all kinds of film cameras. Uh, what I want to do is offer cameras that are under $100 with a lens, solid, reliable cameras for those just breaking into film. So I'm going to start uh, by stating, first and foremost, let me grab a camera here. This is a, one of my recommendations. This is a camera I like quite a bit. It's a Fujika uh, 705. What I want to state is, in the day, you know, this was made in the 70s. It, it has no features. It's all manual. You know, you, you're gonna you're gonna set your uh, your speed up there. Put your lens on there. Set your aperture on your lens. In the day, we called the camera a dummy box. That's right. It was a dummy box. It was a light proof box. You pop the back open. You put your film in it. Close it. Put your lens on it. This one has a built-in meter. You can meter through the lens. It's a spot meter. Um, but other than that, it, it had no features. Uh, I would use a light handheld light meter and a gray card to get all my readings. And I would do it still, even though this one has a built-in meter, uh, with this camera if I were to load it with film. So it was a dummy box. Your knowledge of exposure is the star. The glass you choose, a glass super important, that was the star your knowledge of the film's latitude, how your film behaves. That is the star when you're shooting film. Always keep that in mind. Even if you have an automatic everything on a film camera, you still want to be knowledgeable about your film's latitude and how to expose your film properly. So I just wanted to state that to begin with. It's very important uh, that people understand that film is a different animal than digi digital, much different. Your film latitude tells you how much your film can actually uh, expose properly and sometimes you have to let some highlights go or some shadows go that, that's the way it is with, with film. The first camera I want to uh, mention and recommend is Minolta XG1. The camera is built like a tank again it's one of the dummy boxes you know it has a few little features on here aperture priority um, set your your speed. There's no autofocus. You're going to have to focus by hand. It's mostly a manual camera camera built like a tank. Okay, it is definitely built like a tank. And the lens that I have on here is a kit lens. It's the uh, f2. 
It's not a super fast lens, but it's fast enough. You can shoot portraits at f2, you know, and you're gonna blur your background, keep your model nice and clear. Um, the, I, w I, don't, I don't shoot portrait, portraits with 50s, but some people do. It's a matter of taste and choice. You as a photographer decide that, what you like and what you don't like. We're all different, right? So anyways, I, I highly recommend this camera. Dirt cheap on eBay, you can find it with the lens. This up to, like I said, in your kit lens, uh, probably somewhere in the $50, $65 range with the lens. I mean, to me, that is a reasonable way to jump into film. You don't want to spend a ton of money on something you may not even enjoy. And this camera will take you where you need to go. I have no doubts about that. None whatsoever. This is a good, solid, reliable camera. There is absolutely nothing wrong with this camera. Uh, as you progress later on, and if you like film, oh sure, save some money and get something different. But to start out, you're not, you're not going to go wrong with this. I highly recommend this Minolta. The second camera I want to talk about is a bit more feature laden than the Minolta I just showed. Uh, it is, again, it's a Fujika AX3, aperture priority, has a depth of field button here. Uh, the camera has a lot of features. The uh, only thing I want to mention with this camera, it has this button here. It's how you turn the camera on. You pull it out, all the way out, and if you pull it all the way out, you're in the timer. I don't know if you can see that, but you're in the timer. And if you pull it halfway out, you're just, you're on. You're not in the timer anymore, you're on. The problem with that is, you know, you're pulling the camera to your face, you got the camera in your hand, you're hitting that button, you're popping it off. I, I just think it's a crazy way to turn the camera on. Other than that, I, I really like the camera quite a bit. The lens that's on here has a 1.9 FM sharp contrasty the colors are nice with this lens uh, again you're going to focus by hand as i said it has aperture priority uh, has a meter built into the camera spot meter i'm going to leave all the manuals below on these cameras so if you want to read all the specs and see how the camera actually operates go to the manuals below check them out uh, if i gave you every spec on each of these cameras this, this video would run like an hour and a half long i don't have that kind of time to shoot a video like that as it is, the video is going to be long, but this is definitely a recommendation by me. A camera, you can probably get it with the lens at about $85 or so on, on eBay. So I'll put up a, a, an eBay uh, price right to the side over here. So I highly recommend that. It's a Fujika, uh, popular back in the day. Their EBC coded lenses were, were a marvel back in the, in the day, right? So anyways, um, Next camera I want to mention. This camera is a sleeper. By by far, this camera is just a it's a sleeper. It's a nice camera. It's the N70. Now, this thing is dirt cheap on eBay. I'm going to put it up over here. Dirt cheap on eBay. I mean, you can probably land this with a kit lens, 45 bucks. Uh, the lens I have on here now is 35 to 70 3.3. Another a sleeper lens this thing is super sharp all, all the way through. The thing is, is it's a super sharp, nice lens. With this lens, you can probably get this camera for under a hundred dollars on eBay. Uh, it's feature laden again. It has uh, the focus assist. It's a green button on here, so that green button lights up if you're manually focused with the manual lens, or even if you throw the camera in a manual and use this lens, you can manually focus. It's up to you how you want to approach it. But anyways, look at the um, the manuals below. I'll leave the manual for this camera. It's a sleeper. I used this camera extensively for the better part of two years. The first camera I actually purchased with my own money. I used it for a New York Institute of Photography correspondence class. Uh, I love that class. I learned so much from that class. Uh, I highly recommend it. I don't know, even know if they offer it anymore. It's probably, if they do, it's probably totally changed in the longer film like it was back in the day. But anyways, um, I highly recommend this Nikon N70. It's a bit plasticky. Um, it is the upgrade to the N8008 and it's probably the little brother to the N90S. Uh, I don't know if that means anything to anybody, but I just thought I'd say that. Uh, a decent camera, it's a sleeper, it is cheap. And if you're breaking into film, 
and you're not sure if you're going to like film, this autofocus, uh, everything, aperture priority, shutter priority, full manual, you're, you're going to get it all. It's, it has the modes on here, um, you, know, you know, like night portrait, if you want to use modes. I never use any of that stuff. To me, that's, to me, when they start putting modes on camera, I think that's overkill because you should understand your exposure, as I already said, and and your latitude of your film, what it's going to be able to handle and how to expose for it. Um, if you don't, I guess that's an easy way to learn. But the Nikon N70, for sure, it is definitely, definitely a uh, recommendation for me. I, I highly recommend it. Uh, the next camera, now this camera, it, it wasn't even an intermediate camera. It was a consumer, released as a consumer camera. But this thing is another sleeper. It is a great camera for breaking into film and dirt cheap. These things sell for $40, $45 with a kit lens. Minolta XTSI. Again, like the Nikon N70, loaded with features. You know, you're gonna get the modes on here. You're gonna have aperture priority, shutter priority, full manual. Uh, it even has an eye assist focus on here for you. I never use that thing. I, I usually have my cameras in manual when I'm shooting, but uh, I know there are people that want have full um, autofocus and like to use aperture priority and just starting in film. I mean, that's probably a great way to go. And if that's what you're looking for, this camera will take you there. The only thing I want to say about this camera is it's plasticky. You know, it has a kit lens on here, which is sharp enough, uh, contrasty enough. It won't set the world on fire by any means but it will take you where you want to go, no problem. You're gonna get nice, beautiful images with this camera. Uh, but as I said, it's a bit plasticky. It has an alloy body inside there, but I'm afraid if you drop this, you may shatter it. So you have to be careful. I always use a strap with my cameras because I like to shoot with a handheld meter. So I hang the camera while I meter. I know other people may not like a strap and they don't use a strap and well, I hate a strap. Well, that's fine, but you just you don't want to drop this camera. I know we all have our own approach to shooting, so you just want to be extra careful with a camera such as this. So yeah, highly recommended Minolta XTSI. It's a sleeper by far. Dirt, dirt cheap on eBay. If you're just breaking into film, you are not going to go wrong. This camera will take you where you want to go. You will not go wrong. You know, you have the autofocus on there for you if you need it full manual if you want it just like the N70 same thing same principle now the next camera I want to talk, talk about again it's a Nikon okay this is a Nikon N75 highly recommend it much like the N70 much like it uh, I have film in it right now I just loaded it yesterday. I have 33 images ago. I've been shooting my granddaughters out in the snow. I'm in the Chicago area. We had a lot of snow. Um, this, I have a slower lens on here. It's an F4. It's a 35 to 80 millimeter. Uh, it's sharp enough. The colors are nice, contrasty. It's just not super fast. I, I can only get it up to F4. I use this camera a lot too uh, when I shoot landscapes. I know it don't go wide, only 35, so I don't get big sweeping scenics. But uh, there are lighthouses in Kenosha, Wisconsin that I like to go out to and film the, uh, shoot the White Houses, uh, White House, <laughs> excuse me, lighthouses. Uh, I go out there and I'll shoot the lighthouses with this lens on here. Uh, it's light, that's why I like it. The lens is super light. Everything about it is light. It's, it's a good camera to go shoot uh, street photography, the interiors of Kenosha, the streets of Kenosha, fantastic. I highly recommend this. It's much like the N70 feature laden camera. As I said, I'm leaving it up to everybody to look at those manuals, find out what these cameras are all about on your own. I do not have the time to go through everything with these cameras. But those are my recommendations right there. All of them, every single one of those cameras under $100 with a lens. If you're looking to break into film and you don't want to spend a boatload, I highly recommend going a route such as I just offered. Stay away from the F1, the F2, if you don't want to spend a lot of money. If you have the money, by, by all means, if you can afford it, go ahead and get those cameras are great. I have nothing bad to say about those cameras, you know. You're gonna have to, you 
can change your focus screens on there. I, they're, they're fantastic. I have nothing bad to say about them. Uh, what I am offering is budget-friendly, reliable, solid cameras that will give you very good images. You will not be disappointed. And I just felt this video needed to be done because I keep seeing these recommendations of all these cameras that are just way too pricey. If I was a, a, a new person coming into film and I went on to eBay to search for one of the recommendations and seeing, wow, that camera's $300. I don't even have a lens. And I go price a lens. Wow, that lens is $125. And I got to buy that camera for three. I'm up to $425 on a film camera. Is that how I want to get into film? No, for me, for me, it, it makes no sense. And I'm sure for many others, that makes absolutely no sense. Uh, so anyways, that's all I wanted to state today. Uh, thank you all for tuning in to this video. Please hit that like button. I'd appreciate that immensely. And depending on how this video goes, if I get a little buzz on it, I may um, come back and show a few of my other film cameras. I have a, a Chinon uh, CM5 I would like to just... Uh, show you how to load it. It has a motor on it. I have a slew of cameras as you can see up here. I have I have I own 16 Nikon camera bodies. I just ordered a new one so I'm gonna have 17 Nikon cameras uh, in my collection. Um, I probably have five or six Minolta's. I have just about all the uh, Fujika ST cameras. A couple of Mamiya's, a couple old Kodaks. Uh, yeah I'll just show up. Here's one of the old Kodaks that's right on the shelf here. But yeah, I have a lot of a lot of cool film cameras. I wouldn't mind talking about them. So if there's a little buzz on this video, I may come back and shoot another uh, and talk about some of my other film cameras. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, I just want to post one little image here. This was shot with a Nikon N70. I shot it in Chicago at uh, Millennium, Park, or Millennium Park at night, obviously, as you can see. Uh, as you can see, the Nikon N70 can do a lot of things. It will give you good images. And I'm sorry if I sound like I'm pushing that camera, but I really am because it is a good camera. It's a sleeper and it's cheap. Uh, also, the Minolta XTSI, not going to go wrong. The N75, beautiful camera. Like I said, I'm using it right now. You're not going to go wrong. The XG1 from Minolta, built like a tank. So anyways, all the uh, manuals are below. Thank you for tuning in. Check out those manuals. Let me know what you think. I mean, if you have something, a question, or you want to say something to me, or you disagree with me, I, I have no problem with that. I I try to answer everybody's uh, questions, or yeah, I, I will post every everyone's questions. I, I won't block anything unless you know you're on there cussing or something. So uh, feel free to to leave a comment. I'd appreciate that too, and I will respond to you. Take care, all folks. I'll see you next time. Bye.